Hi guys, this is Lisha Joya here on YouTube. This is going to be an update video, pretty much. I have this notebook, this handy dandy communication tool I call my notebook. I have several of these where I keep my ideas down for videos and, and creations that I make and um, inventions and certain techniques and books I write and uh, poetry and so on and so forth. But in this one, it has um, video ideas for YouTube. And I'm going to be um, glancing at this notebook from time to time. So, to keep my thoughts in order today, um, this one's pretty much going to be an update. Um, a few, about a week and a half ago, my son returned back to school and kind of had a hard time with that day. Um, him going back to 8th grade has been, um, not a challenge for me, it's just like, damn, my kid's growing up, you know? You know, you ever had those moments where you're like, you look back and, and you're sad because you're, you remember this little bitty little baby you held in your arms and now all of a sudden they're almost as big as you and tall as a, whole, tall as a house and, and strong as an ox, you know, and. You never thought you'd see that day, but it's happening to me. 14 years old and in 8th grade, right? Um, a few days ago, I had to get brand new tires on my car. Well, not really brand new, brand new. I had to get some used new tires. Way better than my old ones. You see behind me, I have my old back tires, which are not even worn down as bad but they're worn down enough but they were very unsafe um, the front tires were completely balding or the wires were, were coming out it was not even safe to even drive it was actually really really difficult to break um, and the moment I got the new tires in the car my, my steering's easy it's like driving a brand new car almost except for without the dents, dents and the scratches and the dirt <laughs> on the car. Um, my computer actually died. <laughs> we had a power outage and my 10 year old computer, yes, 10 year old computer, the power supply finally went when we had a power surge. I'm going to go turn it on and it's an HP. So you look in the back and the green light's flashing like this while it's plugged in. So I unplugged everything, tried to do the old blow dryer technique, try to get it going. You know, I tried flipping the little switch with the screwdriver in the back. Nothing. Power supply. That's what it told me. So I went to the PC store down the road over here and they tried to, the, the guys were trying to treat me like a stupid female and um, saying, oh, you need a new computer with one terabyte of da 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 and this and this and that, plus you need this and you need a brand new this and brand new that and the cheapest was going to be about $1,000. I'm like, all I need is just a $45 part, $35 worth of services, have them do it, they have a clean room, they have ground straps all that stuff. Their mouth dropped when they found out that I went to school to become an electronic engineer. And I don't just have an associate's degree, I also have a bachelor's in it. And I told them how to troubleshoot my computer. So, yeah. Try to treat me like a stupid woman like I don't know anything. And see what you get, right? Um, but they replaced it and my computer works beautifully. Um, since I've, um, returned back to karate and my son got the okay to go back from the doctor because, you know, from my previous videos that my son's an epileptic and for the longest time I couldn't get the okay from the doctor to get him to release Seiya to go to karate. Well, this Saturday we went to Karate and um, it was like coming home. I have 
missed my dojo family so much my main sensei um he has been there for me through so much stuff yeah but my shoulder was the most bruised and the most swollen he was the one that tried to help me out with people through his connections and stuff to relieve my extreme pain because when I first started I was in a sling and punching with a sling with ice pack here as well as I'm doing my martial arts and um, you know he was there when my when I lost the commercial condo because of probate, because of greedy people in the family and and greedy people and, and that, that wanted more. They wanted my cars, they wanted the house, so they got it. They got everything. Um, they tried to take my daughter and even try to take my son, try to hurt me as much as possible, but they may have separated my daughter from me, but but she came back. And my sensei was there during those dark times when I was the angriest and the most hurt and vulnerable and confused and depressed and frustrated and and disappointed and disgusted and, and karate and him helping me, um, never leaving my side. You know, he's one of the few men that I respect. And um, I we have returned back to karate, and I felt like I was home. You ever know that place when you return home after a hard day at work? See, I personally don't feel at home here where I live at with my parents right now. But the moment I step in that dojo, I'm calm. I'm relaxed. I'm happy. Well, speaking about training so I went back and we did the Saturday class and um, say I didn't do my class because it's an adult class and it, mine was a weapons class and man and my rusty but I'm so glad I have so much to improve on I'm so glad because if I don't have something to improve on and nothing to challenge me then I have nothing to motivate me then I don't feel like I have anything at all and so, I, I just love challenges. And then uh, my son did his class, and he had fun. He was beaming like crazy. He was happy and joyful and smiling and laughing and serious. I mean, like all those emotions you see, he was that. I even took a friend of mine, one of my guy friends with me, and that stupid fool was supposed to come and train, do a free class and all that stuff. And excuse my expression, but he pussied out. I had lost respect for him because he kept asking me for a couple of weeks, when you go back to Karate, will you invite me so I can do a class with you? I mean, he harassed me. It was his idea. And then I gave him the chance, and then he didn't even bring his clothes at all to even change into for class oh I haven't done anything since I was 18 years old and blah 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 my my thing is look dude I have a I have an injury to my shoulder that will never go away I'll always have pain I always had this injury the only way to get better is to try to make it stronger of some sort you know I was born with arthritis I can feel sorry for myself about that I was born with a heart murmur, you know what I mean? I was born with, you know, so many things wrong with me that for him to make his little excuse made me lose all respect that I've ever had for him. So I drove his ass home. He tried taking my son and I to McDonald's and we don't eat fast food around our house, but we accepted, you know, the lunch. But I was really in a pissing mood with him the entire ride home. I had no words to say to him. I wanted to cuss him out. I wanted to call him a pussy. I wanted to grab his head and shove it in my damn knee. But the man's lucky I'm sore as hell. But I'm trying to change my mentality and my way of life and the way I do things and the way I say things. 
but I'm still me. You know? So there's this um, part of me where I'm trying to change who I am and try to um, work through this struggle that I have between my martial arts and my self-control and my self-discipline and then me who wants to just rip these people a new asshole who deserve it. <laughs> so I'm working on it. Uh, my other thing I wanted to discuss with you is um, here I am sore as hell. My son's supposed to be going to this birthday party to his girlfriend's brother's birthday party and stuff. And I met the mother. The mother seemed to be nice. We got talking and from 4 o'clock to like 7.30. We were talking. We lost track of time. This woman... I don't need the book no more. That's like the last thing on my topic thing. This woman told me, oh, we're going to be back around 9, 9 o'clock, 9.30. And I said, okay, that's fine because you need to take his melatonin because he can't sleep at night because of the meds that he takes. Oh, man, I'm sore. Oh, I'm so, I'm so much in pain. I'm, I'm hurt from here to here on both knees and I'm limping. I know. I look like I need a cane. But anyways, I know. I backtracked. Anyways, so I call at 930. Actually, I text at 930. No reply to 10.05. I'm getting pissed off by now. And not only am I falling asleep, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm in pain, I'm limping, I'm sore as hell. This woman's not answering. Right? So, I'm getting, I'm getting madder and madder by the minute. Okay, I'm sorry, not minute, by the second. I'm sore as hell, like I said, falling asleep. I get a text saying, can we stay 30 minutes more? They're having fun in the jungle gym. And I said, no, I'm coming to get my son. Give me the address. She would not give me the damn address. So at this point, I'm thinking, excuse my language, bitch, you got my kid. He's past time. He needs his damn medicine. And you're not returning my kid to me and not telling me the address? Bitch, I'm going to rip your motherfucking little hair. I'm going to pop your fucking tits and shove your nipples down your throat. That's how I felt. That's exactly what I was thinking in my mind. And that's the nice thing for me to do. Instead, I was thinking. Well, no reply after 10.05. And she wouldn't give me the, the, the address or nothing. So I said, I'm coming to your house right now and I want my son. She said, oh, we'll be there in 15 minutes. Well, I was there within 15 minutes. None of them showed up. Oh, 10 minutes more, 10 minutes more, and they were still at the damn party. So 10 minutes more happened. And then they said, oh, 15 minutes more, 15 minutes more, 15 minutes more. And I'm like, okay, it's already like 10.30 at night. And my son was supposed to have been back about 9 o'clock, 9.30. His bedtime's 9.30 on the weekends. And I'm like getting pissed. I mean... I'm boiling, I'm sore as hell, I took a little, I laid down because I was in so much pain. And it's hard for me to get up and down because I'm still sore. Well, anyways, I, I stayed at their house until they got there and I stood in front of that door and I waited for them and I took my son when they came back and I left. I mean, I he's not allowed there ever again. For the, it's not the kid's fault, it's not the, it's not his girlfriend's fault, it's not my son's fault, not any of that. It's the damn mother's fault for being so rude and disrespectful for her to be a single parent too, to three kids. I have one. My, my kid has more special needs than her kids do. And it's, I felt it was damn disrespectful to me as a mother. I told her I was sore before they even left. And she undermined my authority and everything like that. So, I mean, I'm getting madder and madder and madder. I wanted, I was like, oh my god. I was, oh man, I just wanted to whip some ass about this time. Because, I mean, my son's all I got. You know, she's got three kids. You know, I've got one who's living with me and another one who's on the other side of the country. You know? And for her to 
disrespect me, you know, 30 minutes more, 30 minutes more, not respond to my text, and then, guess what the hell she said afterward? Oh, we didn't respond because our phone died. My son told me they were still texting me and telling the time on their cell phone up until they pulled into the driveway. So here I am, I'm angry as hell. She knows I'm a martial artist. She knows I can rip her ass a new one. I don't give a shit, she's bigger than me. Hell has no fury like a pissed off mother who's trying to protect her kid. So, I felt disrespected by this woman who's supposed to be, you know, semi-understanding as another single parent. Not just a single parent, but as another single mother. It just pissed me off because she had no freaking consideration to my feelings, especially with me being sore and in pain, tired as hell from, you know, traveling a hundred miles round trip to the dojo and, and coming back and having a big long day and being up since six o'clock in the morning and sore as hell and, you know, I didn't sleep till like one o'clock in the morning and, you know, got five hours of sleep and my son making gurgling sounds in his sleep and shit and like, oh my God, you know? Plus some stupid asshole not doing classes like he's supposed to and making excuses like a little typical pussy. Excuse my language. Sorry, it's now it's a vent it's it's a semi update rant vent video now. But I had to get that off my chest. But at the same time it's just you know, she undermined my authority. She didn't give a damn about my feelings as a mother. So it made me lose all the respect that I had built up from her, from talking to her for three hours. It made it go this high to nothing. She lost it all within a few minutes. And when it comes to my kid, I'm anal retentive. Very anal retentive, overprotective. I'm an overprotective bitch. If anybody calls me a bitch, they are right. Thank you. It just means I'm famous when you look my well if you look up the word bitch in the dictionary, you'll see my face and then they'll make me famous. Right. But anyways, um that's pretty much what happened. You know, my car needed new tires. Couldn't drive to the dojo. I wanted to change my life. Got spare tires. Um you know, I let my son go to a party and some person undermined my authority and pissed me off and disrespected me that way and and wouldn't give me the damn address so I really felt like she was kidnapping my son and that's a big no-no with me big no-no that means I won't allow any more texts any more phone calls to come in from the from his girlfriend because the only phone that we've got is my cell phone and I mean if they really want to talk, they'll talk at school from now on. And, um, what else has been going on besides all this stuff? Oh, my father's working on my spare truck. My, uh, my S10. Um, we exchanged, um, we're both working on it together. And, um, we took off the bed of the truck. We had dismantled the gas tank and we dismantled it so he could take the bed off. We took the bed liner off and we're cleaning it up and, and we're going to be uh, changing out the, 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 water, the water pump out and um, the fuel pump because they're both bad. So with that being said, my father and I are going to be working on another vehicle together. So. Anybody have any questions about how to take apart a bed of a truck? Don't forget to, you know, comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching, Leisha Joya, and bye. Oh, oh my legs. Ah, oh, sore. Ah. Oh.